the ministry of sorrow. We cannot say that sorrow and trouble are invariably necessary to the perfecting of holiness and happiness, for our Heavenly Father and the Holy Angels are perfect without sorrow and trouble. But we know from our own experiences and those of others that sorrow, disappointments, and perplexities have served valuable purposes in the ripening of Christian character during this gospel age. The secret of obtaining blessings out of tribulation is the Christian secret of a happy life. To enter the Lord's family, it was necessary that we make a full surrender of our will to God, because on no other terms would the Savior become our advocate with the Father, our surety, and thus enable us to be received as God's Son by the begetting of the Holy Spirit. But this was only the beginning of our sonship with God. As newborn babes, we first needed the milk of the Word, the simpler food, and then the stronger meat to nourish and develop us. We needed discipline and training in order to become qualified for the glorious position to which God has called the church. We must demonstrate our loyalty to righteousness, truth, and virtue by resistance of sin, selfishness, and other opposing influences. As new preachers, we find ourselves surrounded by well-meaning earthly friends who consider our course extreme and attempt to dissuade us from our covenant of sacrifice. Similarly, St. Peter, before Pentecost, endeavored to dissuade our Lord from his sacrifice, saying, Far be it from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But Jesus rebuked St. Peter and continued his sacrifice faithfully unto death. So we must resist our well-meaning friends and prove ourselves loyal to our conservation bar. We find great difficulty also in our own flesh, born in sin and misshapen and miserable. The new creature must battle with the old. These battles sometimes bring glorious pictures and sometimes in glorious defeat. But our sorrows, disappointments, heartaches, and difficulties are wisely permitted by our Lord to assist in the death of the old people, to prepare us for the glorious resurrection day, when we shall have new bodies, fully in accord with our new and perfect will and mind. In times of trial and burden, the Lord draws his people near to himself, because he alone can satisfy, comfort, forgive, and bless. His gracious provision for his children is the mercy seat, the throne of grace. In faith, the heart bowed down, we approach the Lord in the appointed way, and in the name of Jesus, and thus we receive consolation and blessing, and bear the song away. <laughs>